Starseeds are the guardians of Terra who hold the knowledge of our ancestors. They are the inner earth beings that come to guide us with their wisdom. They are the enlightened beings from all over the galaxies that come to Terra like comets of light. They are the pioneers, the way showers, and the architects of a new world. One built upon integrity, unity, and love. These are their stories. Join us as they share their journey of hope, as they break down paradigms and limiting beliefs, as they share their challenges and struggles to fit into the very society they are here to shift. The good, the bad, the everything. This is a journey of a starseed. Well, welcome everybody back to my channel. I am joined today by Susan Oros. We are doing part two of our uh, Jewels of Autism conversation. And I'm really thrilled to have you back here, Susan. We had such, our conversation last time was so well received. I had such an amazing uh, group of comments and even emails. And I had some text messages thanking me for bringing you on. And I'm so honored to share you with the world again. And I wanted to start, well, first of all, welcome back, Susan. How are you today? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. I know it's it's very intense. We're recording this yeah. on uh, on February 19th and there's a lot of planetary clearings there's going on. So just everybody yeah. know that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I tried to record something yesterday and it kicked me out like four times. So the electronics are just unbelievable right now. But what what I my point was that a lot of the questions that I received from parents uh, was about the behavioral aspect. They asked if we could go into a little bit more today, and I'd like to start with this. So there there are children that are experiencing uh, heavy emotions, and they are channeling that in a way that's kind of self harm harming or other harming others by hitting their heads against the wall or hitting someone else or breaking things. Um, we talked about the why last time. Um, but what can we tell, how can we help parents today work through those moments where their children, their child is seemingly out of control and we know they're trying to give us a message. How can we work, how can they work through that? Mm, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. And, and it really, it took me, it took uh, my husband and I, both of us probably a few years to kind of, kind of get that, you know, um, and it is difficult. Well, one of the things that, uh, it's important to remember is that they're energetically sensitive. They're more sensitive than um, we are, you know, in a sense. And really in this 3D paradigm, we've been taught to close off to a lot of uh, our emotions and, and energy and things like that, which is why we're kind of blind to things that could be happening right in front of us, you know? So yeah. They're, you know, they have a much more open system sensory wise. And then um, they could be, uh, what I was shown a few years ago is 10 times to a hundred times more sensitive than, you know, we can, we can imagine. So even amongst them, they're all sensitive at different levels and they're, uh, they might be more sensitive to sound and sight and things like that. But one of the things that we had to learn was to stay calm calm down in those circumstances as much as possible because you don't want to uh, keep adding to the energy you know uh, and if you add energy of frustration to that mix um, you know it, it kind of exacerbates things a lot more so and I know you know it's not easy and it's uh, frightening if you have someone who can obviously keep them safe somehow in, a, in an area uh, like their bed, um, where they can be set, where they can be maneuvered in that direction. Um, uh, you know, that's always a good thing. I mean, Sammy would have explosions in the bathtub, you know, and try to bang her head on the tile, you know. So it's 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 not easy. And it's it takes a while to learn um, to calm yourself. But the deep breathing, learning to align yourself the best you can. and um, uh, uh, just 
bringing yourself to a calm state as much as possible. You know, like her, Sammy's bed is, uh, my husband found, managed to find like this padding that you put on the walls, you know, and it, and it's decorative, you know, but it's, it's meant to be like a headboard and stuff, but it's all like padded. We have lots of pillows around her, around her bed and things like that. So, um, uh, pointing inward, connecting to ourselves, you know, that really made, uh, made me connect to my own soul, that inner connection of with your own, with your own self. Uh, and then, and so breathing to bring yourself to that calm state, uh, so that you can be more present and also, uh, kind of get information about what may be happening. And sometimes it's hard to know, you know, there could be multiple things happening uh, at the same time. You know, as you mentioned, Sherry, and some of you, I watched some, several of your interviews about the grid around the schools, you know, so there might be something energetic in the grid uh, around your um, home. Or uh, if you have neighbors, if you live in an apartment setting and those thing, kinds of things are hard to control, you know, I, I realize. So, I mean, we somehow ended up in a landed in a spot where our neighbors aren't that close, you know, um, and I'm sure that's by by design, you know, in, in a sense, but there's many, many factors to that. So um, learning to calm down um, internally as much as you can and, you know, not saying too much or stop that you're hurting yourself, you know, um, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't help. It doesn't add to the energy. And also, when there's intense moments, I think even as parents, we tend to want to, if there's um, a curriculum, you know, or schooling, you know, if they're in school and things, I you know, understand that it's hard because they, they might have to have some schoolwork done. Um, but also, like um, demands that we might be putting on them, you know, like for Sam. We started with RPM, the letter boards in 2016 and I, you know, through, through 2017, we were making progress and then it all just stopped and we couldn't force her to, um, to uh, work with that, you know, at the time. She just wasn't able to, to focus because of uh, what she was um, going to be doing next, I suppose, is, uh, is a better, better term. So as much as possible that... Um, they're not trying to be defiant. Uh, they're not trying to be, um, and they're not trying to be defiant or malicious or, you know, any of those type kinds of things that uh, they are just more sensitive. And um, for whatever reason that we might not know, um, they just can't be focused on that right now, you know? So I hope that helps. And, and I think, yeah, it, it helps a lot, Susan. And I think it's the, what what you said is important. When I work with parents that are, you know, that have spirit, what I call spirited children, uh, that tend to, you know, resist or say no, or they don't, they can't control their emotions. What I what I always coach the parents is take a mommy time out, you know, take a daddy time, out, take whatever time out, because uh, sometimes they feed off of our energy and we can make the situation worse. And so we need to take a breath. We need to relax right. because they're trying to show us something. And a lot of times they don't have the tools to articulate in words or actions to one, release the energy they're feeling, but also to explain it to us. And if we have a, a labeled autistic child that is isn't is not verbal, it can make it very challenging for them to get their point across. But we're going to talk about it in a moment, not yet. But Susan's going to show us some of the things that they do to try to get us our attention with metaphors. But we'll get there in a minute. But um, yeah. what I wanted to say, ask first, is um, the sensory uh, challenges is a big one um, for for not only the labeled children, but for for a lot of children, they're sensitive to yeah. the sound or uh, or the texture of food and things like that. And they have sensitive a lot of sensitivities to this environment. Sometimes I even call it they're 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 allergic to this environment. Uh, the 3D. Yeah. So what are some tips that you have for people that are dealing with, with those kind of sens sensory sensitivities? Say that five times fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sensory sensitivities. Wow. I mean, I know yeah. the food thing, um, you know, Sam used to be a better eater and you can't make them eat, you know. 
So um, uh, I, I, we just backed off. It was making trying to make her eat quote healthier kinds of foods. You know, she'll go on a binge of you know whatever you know the latest thing is. Uh, right now, it's like this gluten free white pasta. You know. Um, uh, the sensory challenges, I mean, it all depends on um, what they're what they're sensitive to. And so, um, gosh, because some of them can be hypersensitive to something and then hyposensitive True. to other things. So um, what's what's coming right now, what's coming forward right now is uh, so sometimes um, you have to change strategies, like what worked for a while may not work anymore. Uh, or they, they can become hypersensitive or hyposensitive, you know, to various things, depending on how things are, things are changing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a constant guessing game. It can be, but, uh, sometimes you need to, uh, like if there's something that's soothing them, um, like it could be like a certain show or something like that, or an iPad for a bit. Uh, you 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 might want to see when it's uh, when they become oversatiated with that tactic. So Sam, for a while, she liked to spin things. So she would spin cups. I mean, we got her some tops and things, but no, that didn't do it. You know, I mean, even like round plates. You know, she had to spin it because she liked watching it spin but um we noticed that after about 20 minutes you know 15 minutes you know right in there um it no longer works and it becomes can become overstimulating you know it's a kind of a weird thing so uh you have to kind of be mindful of when um they're satiated with whatever strategy that you're that you're using uh so other sensitivities you know you've seen kids with the headphones on that walk around for uh, sensitivity to noise. Uh, if they're hearing a high pitched sound and they look like um, their ears might be bothering them, um, kind of learning to move that energy is how I dealt with it. Oh, excuse me. So, um, so learning to do energy work and things like that is, is helpful um but i do have to say you have to be careful about the energy work that you do on them because uh they're sensitive to energy so like i've known people you know doing reiki on their kids and they had a seizure because it, it was like too much they didn't know when to stop you know so even using too many energy modalities uh can be can be difficult you know um so that's kind of why i started just toning if there's something happening um, then, uh, uh, I noticed that I, it was moving, it was helping to move the energy through, you know? Um, so the way you can, uh, start to do that. Well, the first thing, one of the things that I did when I was trying to tune in, cause you're trying to tune in to see what, what's going on with them is, um, uh, I would take like maybe some Sammy, Sammy's clothes, uh, or or in her room if you can't do it together you know and you don't have to do it together but taking her blanket or her clothes and um just holding them putting in my lap and doing a meditation you know let's say join me in, in a meditation together you know and again they don't have to physically be there but they know they can feel you know feel you and so they might come in and uh ask them to show you what they want you to know uh so that's that's a that's a step uh, in doing that. The other thing you can do is um, put a crystal in their room and like maybe put it under their mattress or something or to get, capture their energy. Ask them to infuse their soul energy into it, and then you know you can use that and and, and meditate. Um, and like I said, the sound is really important right now, as a lot of people are. Uh, finding. So, I mean, I just started with just feeling into whatever sounds wanted to come out of my mouth, you know, even as, as bizarre as it might sound, even if you're driving or if you're somewhere by yourself, just um, 
learning to sound, you know, whatever sounds, vowel sound, you can do vowel sounds, you know, a lot of different sounds. And what that also does then is it also clears your throat chakra, you know, and it um, clear and it can clear your central vertical channel. And um, you start to move that energy within your own body uh, and, um, uh, and start to connect to your own soul. And then, you know, you start to become a little bit more sensitive yourself, energetically sensitive yourself and sensitive in being able to uh, see more things, so to speak. So the sensory part is, is, like I said, it's very, because they're all so different. And we know kids that like to even put coins in their mouth or swallow coin. I mean, and, that, and those are kind of dangerous things. It's a sensory desire that's in their, in their mouth. There's one child that's coming in, um, detox, uh, detoxifying their bodies as much as possible by, um, you know, I mean, we live in a toxic planet. We're, we're finding that out. That's one of the things that Sammy had said too a few years ago is that even though she had the childhood shots, let's just say, call them, you know, um, that the whole earth is toxic, you know, it's, we live in toxicity. So the more you can also kind of, um, go to more natural products, you know, um, that don't have, that are less toxic, the cleaning supplies, those kinds of things that have, uh, additional toxicity in them. There's one child here, um, saying fluoride. Um, uh, so as much as you can help to detoxify your environment, uh, and I realize that it's, it can be challenging depending on who you live with, uh, your spouse, other family members. Um, it's hard to kind of detox everybody's emotions, you know, uh, so to speak. So uh, if there, there might be energetically sensitive to some of the food, um, you know, that you're bringing in, some of the taste. They can taste, um, one of the kids is saying they can taste the chemicals in some of them. Um, they can taste the the uh, the love that goes into making things. Um, I don't know. Does that help? It's such yeah. a broad question because they're all so different. No, and and it's it's impossible in one interview for even us to for us to even cover a fraction of the things that we can say. You know, so we just try to pinpoint some of the highlights, which which you did lovingly. And and I I, I laugh at the last thing you said because my husband and I have this joke in my house that. Whenever, because you know, everyone can tell when there's a cook, home cooked meal because you do put your love and energy into it. And so I cook majority of the meals in the home, and that's only because I I am a little OCD and I'm a control freak. So like my husband tries to help, and I'm like, just get out. Um, but otherwise, he would love to help me. Um, but they always say, oh, mom, you made this with love. Like that's the first thing that they say, and they mm. they you can tell children can tell the difference. They know when you've made it with love because you put your energy. And, and, and it's, it's palpable and you can taste it and, and it's tangible. And I did a session the other day with a child that refuses to eat fast food, will not mm -hmm. eat fast food. And the mom's saying, you know, why we'll go out and he will just refuse to eat. And they don't eat fast food a lot. It's not a big thing that she was right. curious. What, what was the reason for it? And I said, he said, there's no love. He told me there's no love in that. There's no uh -huh. love in the food that, that they make. I want mom to make the food uh, and, and us to create it as a family because there's an energy behind it. And that's how you right. combat pretty much everything in our environment that's designed to to uh, to poison us. We can reverse a lot of it through intention, through prayer, through thought, through love. And I, I think that's a, that was a beautiful point. So thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, yeah. Do you want to share some of the things you mentioned um, before we started recording about things that Sammy would do? Um, Oh. like with the liquids and the peeling off of the labels. I think that was really fascinating. Let's talk about yeah. that a little. Yeah. Yeah. She went through a period a few years ago when she was still like in, um, I think she was in middle school at the time where she had to rip labels off everything. I mean, like she tried to run up to garbage cans and rip labels off, you know, dig through the garbage and try to rip labels off, tags off of uh, towels and everything. Um, labels off of, you know, any medications or supplements and things you know uh um and it, it dawned on me after a while that i was like we have to get rid of labels you know we we over label every 
everything, put people in boxes uh, with a label. I mean, you know, we, in some ways we're dependent on it because this is the way we communicate in a sense and it has some value, but yeah, going forward, you know, more and more, you know, we need to uh, uh, get rid of these, um, get these labels. The other thing that she used to do is dump liquids. I mean, I'm like shampoo bottles and, you know, liquid soaps, uh, all these things. And that's when uh, planetary clearings were going on or clearing of emotions, emotional body things uh, going on. Um, and uh, so we even put like, all right, well, we use bar soap then in the bathrooms. Well, then she would try and flush that down the toilet. And you know, these big bars would get, I mean, we get jammed in the toilet. So we're like, oh, I can't do that. So right now um, it, it it got better um, and now um, definitely the past couple of weeks, it's a bit on the rise again, more of the liquids, uh, dumping liquids. Thank good it's not everywhere. I mean, we had to like put child locks and things because I mean, I mean, it was literally everything, milk, containers of milk, um, you know. So right now she's she's doing that again, more, more with like the soaps, uh, the liquid soaps in the bathroom. Um, you know, on the sinks and things. Uh, so not as bad as she used to, but there is a, a big clearing going on, um, clearing of the planet, clearing of uh, more of our emotions, you know, all those things. As the planet is able to change and uh, she is able to do more clearing of her density, then now uh, it affects us because we're physical matter of the earth. And so it makes it easier for us to clean, uh, to clear ourselves as well and not come back. You know, I think that was the, the thing that um, many of us and, and people who are been on this quote uh, ascension path for, um, you know, many, many years is that, you, oh, I thought I cleared that already. And it's like, why is it back? Oh, I thought I cleared that. Well, and if it's so long, so long as the planet was denser, it was, it was hard to kind of uh, clear that permanently. But now that the planet is changing, it's getting easier to uh, to clear that. So they may have um, a message or they're trying to communicate something through some of these behaviors. As annoying as it can be, you know, uh, there's um, usually a re reason behind it. But there's some sort of message they're trying to relay. But again, they don't always have the tools, the vocabulary, the means to to give you the message uh, the way that we would expect to, to receive the message. And I think that's also by design. They're trying to let to encourage us to think outside of the box and tap into senses that we are not used yeah. to using. You know, and exactly. I, I recently with an, another little boy, um, he was actually, he's not a little boy, he's a young man now, and he is still nonverbal. And he was telling me that um, they can hear because he was also really sensitive to sound and he said they, that they could hear so much more than we can and he uh, even took it another level that I wasn't even thinking he said there the there are words that you guys don't even hear there's a language that is spoken that you guys aren't hearing that we can hear and it's right. negative and it's dark it's it's mm. the I think it's the subliminal messages that are put through the radio waves and all the frequencies yeah. that are yes. encouraging us to be in a low vibration, but they pick it up and they actually can um, interpret it. And he said, it's quite, it's quite scary and overwhelming. And so that's another issue right. as well. Come into right. that too. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been looking at a little bit more at uh, geoengineering, what's been going on. I um, have Alana Friedland's book. She's kind of, the, um, she's, been on this journey for a long time. So she has a book out called Geoengineering and Transhumanism, um, you know, and HARP. People might have heard of HARP, the space fence that they they built, that they've built, and they've gotten very, very sophisticated with this and through satellites and things. Um, you know, and they've been studying, they've been studying uh, brain waves for, especially with, uh, you know, our, our simian, beings that are on the planet, you know, because we have similar kinds of um, uh, structures and things, but, uh, or genetically. Uh, and so they've been studying this and even people, unfortunately, studying brain waves of people and things. And they, they know which, um, what kinds of brain waves and frequencies uh, are low. And that there are certain areas with these, I don't know, towers and things where you hear about 
where um, the suicide rates are higher, you know, yeah. because yeah. they're they're beaming these out. They're they're trying to stop this ascension, and they they are becoming they become more and more aggressive with these kinds of things. You want to comment on? Oh. No, no, I'm just agreeing with you. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's and I didn't realize the, how sophisticated um, it, it is. You know, with these five G uh, towers and the waves that they can send out. They can really affect people's um, emotions. I know I felt it like a couple of months ago where I was like, all of a sudden I felt like um, uh, I was having all these negative thoughts, you know, uh, and, and I, you know, when I looked at it, it was something that was being really beamed uh, to us. And so there's, there's a lot of that. Uh, there's a lot of that that goes on, unfortunately. Um, you know, we just, we just haven't realized, uh, yeah, they, they know the brainwave states um, that uh, that we operate on. Uh, and oh yeah, and I remember I walked into a, a, a grocery store one day, it was a couple of years ago, and all of a sudden I, I felt um, like I was being directed to, you know, buy this thing that I didn't want, you know? I was like, what, what is this? So, you know, they, uh, they've been manipulating humanity for a very, very long time. Um, so Sammy's coming in right now and um, and saying, so part of the change that's, you know, underway with the planet is uh, uh, our neurology is, is uh, being rewired as well. And so there's a level of intensity uh, for that so that um, we're not, our brainwave states are going to change so that they can't affect us with their manipulative uh, transhuman geoengineered devices. You know, uh, there's quite a lot of it. I was I was shocked. I was like, "There's no way we're going to overcome this uh, without divine intervention." And thank goodness, because I just be like, <laughs> "Forget it," you know, because <laughs> that's how far they've gone. Um, I didn't know. So. Yeah, and that's part of the reason why Sammy and and many in the autist collective choose not to fully come in and integrate so that they don't, they're not attached to that energy. They don't feel it. They don't, they, they sense it. They know it's there. Don't get me wrong. Right. They are not, they are not uh, poisoned or, or, you know, they're, they're not hurt. Their consciousness. By it. Right. Yeah. Their consciousness is not affected by, by it, you know? Um, oh, and that was one, one thing that was interesting. Uh, I know you've talked about different groups or, uh, what they what they do here, but uh, I had a session with this woman who was asked has Asperger's and uh, an adult woman, and um, I learned that the Asperger's uh, people, um, you know, it's kind of similar to autism, but they recognize it kind of different. But they had laid a uh, energetic, almost like a horizontal energetic grid, so that these higher vibrational autistics would have could come in and have something to anchor to without anchoring to the um to the planet i was like wow so they're like the horizontal and these autists are like the vertical i don't know exactly what that means but i was like well that's, that's interesting you know so well, I, I think i think they complement each each other um uh, because when you break down in energetically what the characteristics are the different characteristics of the different groups autists autists um and the, the asperger's and adhd uh they all have qualities about them and characteristics yeah. and if you think about it it's it's yin and yang they're very um they're very opposite but they're also complementary mm -hmm. and i think that that's mm -hmm. by design so that explains exactly what you're saying and, and it is is the same thing you know they they complement each other and they can anchor each other in in different ways and i and they can support each other uh and i work with a lot of um uh, i hate using these labels but the asperger label um, and they're so intelligent. They're such analytical yeah. person. You know, if I took, I guarantee you, if I took three, all three of my children to the doctor, they would come out with some sort of a label, but I don't believe in the labels. But if there was such a thing, I know one of my children has, is, is borderline uh, Asperger's and, and, and I understand him though. I understand mm -hmm. his thought process. They're very analytical. They don't like attention on themselves. They're very, they're very wise and they're very calculated in their moves. They're very introverted. They don't like a lot of attention. They don't like a lot of, you know, uh, they process things differently. You know, when my when right. son was two years old, I remember one year, 
we sang happy birthday to him, Susan. It was probably mm -hmm. 20 people in our house. I got him this little lion themed birthday cake. It was so cute. And I, he put them up there on the table and we were like, okay, we all sang happy birthday. As soon as we all started, this kid broke down screaming and crying, telling everybody to stop, uh... stop, stop. He lost it. And when I pulled him aside, he, he had admitted, he admitted, to, or admitted, he said, mommy, I don't like that. Why are they singing to me? And I thought, gosh, how, I never would have thought that that could be perceived as a threat or make you feel uncomfortable. And to this year, to he's 10, we have never sung happy birthday ever again. And he, and he, and we always ask him every year, can we sing? And he says, no. So what we do is mm. we all say at the same time, happy birthday. And he's okay with that. You know, they don't mm. like a lot of people. They don't want a lot of attention on them. Is there something wrong with him? Absolutely not. It's just, it's just his preference. And that's the thing about the spectrum is that they are very colorful. They're very unique. They're different. But we, we need to honor what makes them comfortable and allow them to be who they are. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing when we allow them to be. Yeah. Just to be. Yeah. And that's the kind of the, the new parenting uh, way that we have to, you know, understand that these kids if they don't like something they really just don't like it you know and you can't make them uh do anything um and I what I realized you know when I thought about it and you may not have an you might not be able to verbalize an answer why you know and I realized you know like our tastes are like that you know like why don't you it tastes good why don't you like it well it doesn't <laughs> taste good to them you know and it's like why does it taste good to you and not to somebody else you know it just it just doesn't feel right you know to our bodies for whatever reason. And, um, you know, there may not be a reason that they, you can e explain in words, you know, and yet this has been the problem of 3D is we just shove it down your throat. You know, we're just gonna make you, <laughs> we're gonna desensitize you and make you like it somehow by, uh, you know, gradually, you know, we're doing whatever, sense it, what do they call it? Systematic desensitization. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, that's, that's, that's what's happened to us. And this is why so many of us uh, who are adults now are not, um, uh, don't see what's going on in some ways, let's say, let's say in the outer world, because we've been brainwashed, you know, to uh, overlook things or just suck it up, you know, and just keep doing it. You, we're going to make you do it, whether you like it or not. And that what does that do it causes people to detach from themselves themselves and detach from their own inner knowing their own inner intuition from their own soul and um this is how it's come this far uh especially with the last what's gone on in the last three years you know um this is why we got to this point you know in a sense so yeah the new kids are not are not gonna they're not buying it, you know, you can't raise them with fear. You can't raise them with, you know, I don't know, all these other tactics that we were raised with, you know. Um, As I said, so anyway. it does not work anymore. Yeah, uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> you, you can't, or because we've always done it this way, or because I said so, then none of those work anymore. Yeah. And they, yeah. they will take us out of our comfort zone, and they are strong-willed uh, and determined to make us see it, and I, and I, now I, I, I embrace it, but I resisted too. I was that parent that resisted. And I'm like, you're going to listen to me. And then I'm like, who, who am I? Like, stop it. Get off your high horse, Sherry, and, and learn from this. This this little being is trying to teach you something, you know? And right. and um, my mom used to make fun of me too. She she would say jokingly, what is this free range? I think she called it free range parenting. She's like, what is this free range parenting you guys do these days where you let them just run the show, you know? And I'm like, I had to question myself. Because I'm like, well, yeah, but I kind of have to if I'm going to learn something from them. And I, it's like this weird balance. So I got to figure this out. So I got to let that there have to be boundaries. But then I also have to loosen the reins and let them teach. So it's it's, it's an right. interesting, balance, you know. Right. Yeah. And we're still kind of in that in our household, in a sense, because Chris, you know, my oldest one was Down syndrome. You know, he uh, uh, and Sam, too, you know. You have to learn, and maybe that's another way to de help, help cope with some of these, quote, behaviors or whatever. You have to learn more positive language, you know, instead of saying, you know, don't do that. Or, you know, if you do that, you know, uh, you're going to get in trouble. You know, those kinds of things don't don't work. You have to speak more in positive 
terms, you know, like Chris likes to bug me about well, what's, you know, what's for dinner. I mean, I'm like, oh, you know, I just woke up or it could be the night before, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> and it's like, it, you know, it's like, I'll, 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 I'll just say something or um, anyway, you have to, that's not a good example, but you have to phrase it in, in positive uh, terms, you know, if he's resisting a transition or something, oh, let's do this, you know, instead something, you have to turn it into a, a positive. Um, uh, and that, you know, I know that's a kind of a behavioral strategy that's encouraged, but I mean, you really, with these new kids, I really feel like uh, that's really what you have to do. You can't um, talk in, in fear. I know my older brother, he just had, he has two little little uh, grandchildren now and you know he said they were at the zoo with one of them and he said uh, don't get too close to the animal it might bite you and she started you know crying she was like all I said was well you can't say it that way you know you you can't use that kind of fear tactic um, you have to say something uh, you know more more pot and phrase it in a twisted and around into a more positive statement um, instead of trying to induce fear uh, you know, right away. So, yeah, and that's what we were, that's what I was raised, you know, kind of with, uh, if you do this, then this is going to happen. And it's something fearful, uh, usually at the, the consequences. Anyway, but anyway, now let's keep going here. That's, no, that's so true. And sometimes it's okay to just say, you know, you don't have the answer and it's okay. And you can just say, I'll, I say this to my kids all the time. I, I understand how frustrating this must be for you. Can, what can I do to help you through it? You know, because I'm not trying to, to discredit their emotion or take or devalue what they're going through or saying, you know, parents always like to say, oh, everything is going to be okay. Sometimes I tr I say that to Aram and she's like, you know, you and, yeah. and maybe to her it isn't. So I have to let, we, we just have to let them be who they are and navigate through the situations and just say, how can I support you right now? What can mommy do to help you? And sometimes they just need a hug. Some people sometimes don't give them a hug. Like the last thing they want yeah. is to, you just have to know your child and work and work through the different the trials, trial and error, right? And be flexible. Right. right. Yeah. And then so when you're just, in the height of that emotions, then you have to sometimes you just need to, yeah, like just just walk away, let them kind of de escalate, you know? So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yes, exactly. Uh before we started recording too, you had mentioned um, you said something about having some messages uh, from some certain groups of, of children. Do, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Some messages that are coming through th from the collective? Um, yeah, why don't I share, do it with uh, sharing by sharing some images? Um, because oh, cool. I Let's think, do that. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, okay. you know, I can I can kind of explain where, um, you know, I'm getting some of these things. Uh, so let's see. Uh, and we played with this so that uh, it should come out. Um, yep. So this first one is, uh, I just call this Sammy's soul energy. So she's been on an embodiment kind of journey here. I could feel it for the last couple of years. So at different stages, um, uh, I would draw things uh, to help her with her embodiment process. And so this was, I can't remember, was it 2021? Yeah, um, that I drew this. Uh, it represents her soul energy and soul essence. Um, this beautiful. one, uh, this one is, uh, uh, this one was interesting in how it came in. So the first couple of them are just some examples of how, you know, some of these things have been transmitted. So some things I draw to help her in whatever process she's going through. Um, and uh, so this one came through, through her. This one wasn't an, uh, like, like it didn't dysregulate her, but I could tell that she was working on something, you know, and, um, you know, like I see the number in my head, like 26 D and, uh, it was almost like something that was coming through that was kind of like barely visible. It's like these little particles or something. And, uh, anyway, so I, uh, when it landed, then, um, somewhere in there, I think my consciousness or her inner consciousness kind of joined and, my consciousness kind of turned it into like a, this flower kind of pattern, uh, but it's for emotional healing. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, oh, uh, I love that. Yeah. But uh, so that's how things come in sometimes. And it, it's not always aggressive, you know, 
like I said, and she's present. She doesn't have to always leave her body. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, as she's doing this embodiment, she doesn't, it looks like she doesn't have to leave her body anymore. The way the cosmos has opened up and we have so many portals and access points, as, as you know, uh, from other conversations that you've had. So she doesn't have to quite leave her body, uh, things like that anymore. So I'm looking forward to, to that, how that goes. Um, this one is interesting because uh, it's an example when she did become uh, very aggressive. It's an unusual image, I know, but uh, it came through a couple of years ago. I remember it was right before Thanksgiving and we were driving and, you know, I was by my, well, I was with someone that I was driving and sometimes she would become aggressive uh, and self-abusive in, in the car Um so, you know, I just started toning and I didn't know what was, you know, happening. So I tone anywhere. I was like, well, I'm driving, you know, I have to do yeah. these kinds of things. But um, so I was toning for a while. And then what I saw was this like wing almost piercing through, <laughs> like it was trying to get through, you know, uh, this layer. So I don't know if she, if, if she was bringing it over something that's coming in from the cosmos and she just feels it somewhere, you know. So it was almost like it was breaking through, like a breaking through a barrier and uh, she could feel that breaking and it was very uh, uncomfortable to her. So that's an example, you know, when, uh, of how sensitivity could also affect some of these nonverbal or beyond verbal uh, individuals. So, um, you know, I know crows are supposed to be black, but they said, if you think of a crow as black, it's, you know, before the emanation of all the colors. So the dragon crow is kind of the opposite with all the, the colors and what it's uh, doing is um, kind of uh, deleting all these hexes and, um, you know, curses and things that crows and uh, ravens have been used also for black magic kinds of things. And so uh, this dragon crow is represents it kind of cleaning up um so that's that's how sammy uh experienced it yeah so it was uh it was it was a tough one and again you don't know what is going on uh you know until uh you start to tune in um this one i uh you know shared the last time about these uh seven micro heavens so to speak or micro universes um, and they're not really micro they're just i don't know why i can't know don't know why they're called micro but um the autists said that uh they were gaining access that uh feeds into the quantum field so the quantum field is also going through a cleanse and so this image represents uh these seven quote micro heavens and this is represents behind the, this tree the seven higher heavens uh bridging the, uh, it's like bridging the macro and the micro. But I bring this one up because these uh, seven quote micro heavens, the autists born after 2016 in that time frame were being diagnosed with that. They're, um, they're have, they seem to have a big role with this uh, seven micro heavens uh, that feeds the quantum field. Uh, they're activating it. They're uh, engaging it. So their their energy is even more refined um, than what uh, like Sam is, uh, and um, it's through the ability to work with this quantum field. Right is where this idea of uh, the wizard, you know, comes from manifesting because we rely on this uh, quantum field. Um, to turn things into matter, you know? So what they'll be teaching is, you, you know, we, is yet to yet to come, but um, they seem to have a big part in this, um, in this part of these, uh, the quantum field and how we're accessing the, the quantum field. Um, so what they have to teach us when they become adults or along the way here as, as it goes, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Um, this one is, uh, I just called it uh, the oversoul of a group of children under 11. I was driving by um, one of our local elementary schools one day and I just um, felt immense, immense sadness. Um, 
they just felt like they were completely uh, like they were being um, shut down. You know, is the only word that comes. I can't remember. This was a few months ago. It wasn't 2022. I can't remember. So it was uh, several months ago, probably earlier part of last year or so. And if we, you know, kind of think back to the things that have been happening, yeah. um, you know, uh, these uh, facial kinds of shields and um, maybe some of these kids who might have been, uh, quote, uh, hopefully not jabbed, you know, I don't know, or their parents. Uh, but um, I mean, just I just could feel how how hard it was on them. Um, and they uh, I, I wrote a blog on this. It's on our website somewhere. Um, because it was so impactful. So when I can't got home, uh, you know, I, I had to draw it right away. Um, they told me they wanted to message out. Um, but, uh, um, you know, they were describing how hard it was for them and uh, the anxiety that they were feeling. Um, and so many of kids, how many of them are being taken to psychiatrists, you know, because of the level of anxiety that they were experiencing. Uh, you know, they're just the fear that went out these last, you know, two years, two, three years. I mean, it's just really appalling. Um, but, you know, they feel that, uh, that fear uh, and kind of like it was suppressing their spirit, you know, suppressing their, who they, who they were, who they wanted to be, you know, are here, here to be. So, um so anyway, it was still emotional. It was it was so it was so palpable to me that uh, I really felt for them. This is a beautiful illustration of everything you just said too. There's so much. I think your art has a frequency attuned to it, and those that that see this image can, can be activated or triggered in a powerful way. And I just this one is just speaking to me. It's so beautiful. But I can yeah, feel I mean, just, the energy behind it, you know, the good, the bad, the everything. Mm -hmm. What they're experiencing and what they're here here to do, you know. So I drew it so that, yeah, more people who look at it can uh, help support these, this, you know, this soul group. You know, they're like an oversoul group and they have a mission here, you know, when they become adults. So that yeah, was very, very sad to me. But um, yeah, also very beautiful, you know. Oh, this one's interesting. Um, so this uh, is a crystal kind of star icosahedron representing the uh, the human collective oversoul. Like we're really one soul in a sense, you know, of humanity, and um, uh, we're all a part of this one uh, collective oversoul of the human template, you know, so to speak. And so this is saying that the new human template uh, for the, for the, like God has set an intention, you know, for uh, a phase on the earth here. And so it was uh, planted into the 8D earth. And I look at it and it's 3-1-2020 when I, I guess I drew it. Um, whoops, let me go back to the other one. Yeah. And so uh, this is the Tesseract, which is a hypercube and uh, we're in uh, if you think of the cube as the element of earth, the mat element of matter, you know, that makes a uh, manifestation on the planet, we're now in a, what we we'll call, we'll call a hypercube, uh, which is like hyperdimensional. Um, so we're based, we're, we're in that phase now that I started activating in 2022. Um, and uh, the new babies that were born, uh, particularly in 2020, uh, you know, from like March on, uh, were activating, they're coming in, I was shown that they're activating this human uh, template oversoul, so to speak. Uh, and this is images from one of my uh, grandnieces, she was like 15 months old. And, um, you know, before I went to bed last one night, um, she came into my mind, I could feel her right in my pineal. And she showed me this beautiful flower. So uh, the next morning, I got up and I, and I, and I drew this flower. But uh, she's, I mean, she's like what? Just, I guess she'll be three later this year. But she's so two and a half years old. But uh, I only had the opportunity to meet her once so far. But I mean, just, 
amazing how sensitive she is. Uh, just loves plants and birds. She, she could see a bird flying overhead before she even looked up. She knew, you know, I mean, just so in tune with, uh, with nature. So they're coming in, um, they're coming in differently. Uh, they're coming in through Sirius C, I was shown. Uh, so they're not taking on um, uh, the karmic overloads of humanity, which really has been placed on us by these, uh, let's say, low consciousness uh, entities uh, that dump their karma on humanity. So they're not coming in with this karma. It's not being imprinted into their into their bodies. Uh, so anyway, they're um, activating the uh, the human oversoul as they are coming in. So. And what they have to do and teach us, you know, uh, in 20 years when they're adults, uh, you know, we just, we just have to see. So, but they're already activating this. So that's their presence here is, is important. This is a, a new one, a recent, um, it came in from a friend, <laughs> a friend, uh, her daughter, who's I think eight, seven or eight years old. She like bilocated to our house one day, and you know I was like I was, could feel her walking around in our house. I was like, "What are you doing?" And so she you know, no. communicated. She communicated with Sam, uh, showed me a picture, uh, like Sammy needs this, and so she showed, showed me this beautiful um, like uh, flower and like very uh, earthy planty, and so she told me to print it and uh, put it under Sammy's bed. So that's what I did. So that one that that's not one of these images. Um, and then shortly after, uh, like she showed me that these new kids, the, this particular group um, in the 22nd dimension, they had built this uh, sun star network and it was radiating out. So, uh, you know, there's other kids, obviously, of this particular soul group. Uh, and then she told me, now you have to, uh, the group then told me like, you have to draw it more like into a flower. And so they kind of, uh, you know, pick the colors and uh, drew it into a flower to make it more useful kind of, you know, for the human here. Um, and it was uh, affecting our solar system. And then they had me um, draw it over our sun. So this represents this flower uh, or with our 4, 4D sun. So it's literally like radiating through, um, you know, uh, through our uh, through our son and 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 coming to us and what these kids have to teach us as we go here, you know, we still have yet to see. And um, you know, it made me wonder, Sherry. I don't know if you don't mind me saying, but I was wondering if like Aramis might be part of this uh, soul group. So, um, yeah, I, who knows? I mean, I, I I know she's part of the Artemis group, but it's it's more of a a light group that is to is the are the future leaders and they're quite quite uh a presence <laughs> let's just yeah. say yeah. Uh, and they can be yeah. really combative and very high spirited and they are game changers uh and um they keep me on my toes for sure um mm -hmm. but yeah perhaps mm -hmm. they work together absolutely yeah yeah but i mean you know it, it, can belong to many different kinds of yeah exactly you know groups depending like yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep. depending on dimensionally where you where you are you know where you're operating from but um but yeah so you know that was just a little bit of what i received lately with the uh uh with some of the kids that are on the planet and so kind of what you're doing you know is so important because you're um uh these these kids are more sensitive um, they're wired differently. They're more naturally telepathic. Um, energetic communication, you know, is 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 very easy for them, and um, uh, they communicate with nature at various levels and, and the animals and and things like that. So um, these new kids are really really significant. So uh, yeah, that's what I had to share about the kids. I think. And, yeah. Um, it's a Yeah. And, and so I next, like uh, you just could put these on here, and people could just stare at them. You know, like the longer that you look at some of these 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 pieces, you know, the more you see, and then your imagination takes you someplace else, and it could be a catalyst of transformation. Mm. Just just one of these, they're so beautiful. 
Mm, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I mean, I hope to get these out someday, you know, in different, in different kinds of formats. Um, you know, it's just so much, uh, that's come in one after another. Um, so if you have time, well, it's been an hour. I don't know if, you know, I can run through a few other images that I, I selected oh, yeah, over the last, sure. yeah, a couple of years, uh, just to, just to kind of give people indication of what that, you know, we have been getting a lot of transmissions for a while. So this is the earth's uh, dragon chakra, which is just means that is an access in the earth, um, to these other fields and realms. Uh, and that's why, you know, the earth is going through, so it is able to go through so many changes now. This is uh, something from 2020, uh, Mother of the Vector Codes. And I haven't looked at these in a while. And I was, when I started going through them, I was like, wow, these are really activating now. Uh, yeah. So vector codes would be like um, timelines, you know, future timelines or uh, uh, to align to the cosmic cycle of the, uh, that we're that we're engaging to uh, correct, really eventually eliminate all distortions and low consciousness. Um, so that's the mother of vector codes. And some of these, I had no idea what to call them at the time. So yeah. this is another one. Um, you know, they come out like this came out like moths for some reason, uh, but indicating you know a, a kind of a tra trajectory. So uh, and there are star seeds that might be. Um, uh weaving timelines in their sleep or you might not be aware of it but people might be having dreams of weaving something or knitting things like that uh yeah. you could be uh, participating in weaving uh the future timelines as we go through this ascension and evolution so this is the emerald uh vector code uh, breath of holy mother um that was a uh, that I kind of captured. So I'll go through these phases where like, I'll just draw things and um, these different things. But uh, yeah, my intention, you know, always is to capture um, the beauty of what I'm experiencing so that other people can experience it, you know, as well and uh, feel that sense of hope. Um, but even though the outside world looks really ugly that, um, uh, there's some, you know, there's a lot of uh, beautiful things happening. Oh, and this is this is interesting. I forgot about these. Uh, there were the, some of these winged symbols that came through, uh, and this one is uh, in, it was in 2020. Uh, these winged symbols uh, mean that they're non-dimensional, so they can kind of move through all uh, dimensions. Non, kind of, I don't know. It's non-dimensional is the only word that I can use. So revealing the truth, you know, um, and see with real eyes. And so we can see what's been kind of happening here the last uh, two or three years now of uh, really truths being revealed and uh, seeing seeing people of our government and our uh, alphabet agencies and what they what they truly are, you know, uh, underneath it all. Yes. So absolutely. That's it. Yeah. So that's what's been happening. Uh, then we went through a dragon phase, uh, aquamarine dragon and uh, amethyst dragon. Um, started coming through the ruby flame dragon and an emerald dragon. Um, so that was another phase. Uh, oh, and these are these are really um, beautiful. These are uh, to say that God um, source really sees everything so god this is like these would be like sun emanations of god and the consciousness that uh, god is radiating you know the god of edenic magic you know so it's like streaming through and um um you know it's here the god of paradisian earth you know well what would that look like what would that feel like um we don't have a quote we have some vision and imagination of it but how do we do that you know and it's through it's beyond words you know it's it's feeling it it's knowing it and uh it's by coming into contact with our own soul and allowing our children to be connected to their own soul and allowing them to be who they are that um you know you you know this uh that we co-create the new uh, earth um so that's all the one too the more consuming the madness uh again the tesseract this is kind of 
taking it all in, cleaning up kind of feeling, and also burning out dead light energy. Um, that's what miasma is, but especially that's been stuck in the earth. Uh, oh, yeah, cosmic mother and father of the United. I just called him that. That was from last year, 2022. Um, cosmic meaning that we're accessing really deeper into the cosmos is really the only way to say it. Uh, so for kind of the representation of, of that um, coming through. So cube codes last year uh, in 2022, that was, a, that was a theme for a while. <laughs> Uh, definitely transmitted by Sam. Uh, one morning I woke up and I just saw this stack of cubes right in my heart. Uh, and uh, I just had to start drawing them. Um, so this is just a sampling of, of it. Uh, but cu cubes to rebuild, um, to manifest, that means um, cube codes for the plants. So there's one for like almost all of them, the ocean life, the planets, I mean, you know, I, I drew, I drawn about 50 of them, but you know, I, I didn't finish, you know, all, quite all of them uh, of the possibilities, but um, the metals, I mean, there's just a whole bunch of them. Um, so it's just saying that everything is being regenerated uh, in a sense, revamped um, in, in this new eight dimensional um, universe, so to speak. Uh, so this one is for the mycelium network, the mushroom. And, uh, you know, as you probably know, and as other listeners probably know, the mycelium, the mushroom world, um, they're very important for uh, cleaning up the planet because uh, they're in that in-between state of matter and kind of non-living matter and how it inter interfaces with the quantum field. So um, the mushroom and mushrooms and helping us to clean up the planet. Uh, it's going to play a big role. And then I just wanted to share, this is the dance of dark matter, you know, I just called it. So dark matter is not really actually dark, you know, it's actually I mean, these brilliant, brilliant um, colors and things coming out, uh, uh, dark matter. Maybe it was just dark to us. We called it dark because it was hidden from us, kind of kept a secret from us, you know. Uh, and this is what I call the, the the symphony of the 18th dimensional universe. So um, just to give people some kind of sense of, uh, um, you know, what's what's been transmitted. Uh, I know there's a lot of other people that are drawing and they're, they're drawing codes. A lot of people seeing dragons and different codes and things. So it's, uh, it's a real, um, a very rich time, you know, in a sense even if it looks really, can look ugly at times on the outside, so. You, you know what, you know what I see, Susan? When I look, I, I, I'm not an artist in, in, in that way at least, um, but what I see when I look at your pieces and other beautiful artists out there and their designs, I see this energy and this frequency to it that is so palpable and it's so apparent especially when you had this emotional reaction or response to it. And I see in the future, somehow these pieces are displayed, whether they're three, three dimensional or two dimensional or however, but I see these spaces where there's halls of them and people can walk down and let's say they have the, the moon Oros wing, you know, and mm -hmm. we have all these Sammy inspired and autist collective inspired pieces down this one hallway. And people can walk down and look at these pieces and it's actually a healing space. So it's not like a museum. Mm. It's, a, it's a space of healing and activation. And then down mm. in an adjacent hall could be this other artist's depiction of whatever it may be. And and they're all activating. They're all, because I see, I believe that the, the, I've seen the same things back in Lemuria, for example, and mm -hmm. I'll find it in other places where the art used to be a source of activation and healing and there were frequencies embedded in codes and symbols and that's what they use as part of their healing and i see and i mm. see that that full circle so what i believe is your art that you've been putting together for years and years and others are getting it ready so that when we transition over we will already have a good number of pieces all around the world to be displayed for that purpose 
So when I see mm. the, your pieces, I, they really hit something within me and I find myself getting emotional looking at them. And I just, I'm curious what everyone else is thinking when, well, as they're watching this. So please comment mm. below and let us know what you're thinking. Cause they're absolutely stunning. And, and you have these on your website, right? So if I put the link below to yeah. your website, are they there? Well, not, not, not all of them. Um, I don't know if that I have all of them on the website. Cause uh, there's just been too many to uh, keep up with, uh, to put on the website and stuff. Um, yeah. But what, what, what I could do is I'm happy to sh uh, share um, my slides with you. I can, I can share a PDF of them and you can, um, I, I'd be honored if you want to make them available and make it available on your website uh, as well. And if people want to, uh, you know, use them or look at them as well, I'd be happy to, uh, to do that. I would love that, Susan. Maybe I'll share one once a week or or so on my on the Instagram page, so people can just stare at it and, and see what it does for them. So we'll, okay. we'll talk about okay. that offline, but I think that would be beautiful for for us. Um, is there anything else, Susan, that you want to talk about tonight? Um, that we haven't shared yet that you think would be great for for us to kind of finish off of our our conversation today? Mm. Well, let me think. Um, nothing. Nothing is popping up. Right now, let me see if Sammy has anything. Um, she's just saying right now, uh, be ready for um, major upheavals, but it feels like a good thing. Major upheavals, which will uh, shift your perceptions, shift your awarenesses, shift your um, Shift your desire to consecrate your body, your living temple of light that is uh, a divine union of soul and body. This can happen now because of the density changes. And so um, she's saying, I'm undergoing this divine union myself, which means in embodying um, uh, in a way that's been never available to you before. Um, people, even people who thought they were embodied have uh, a rude awakening that's <laughs> awaiting them. Um, when you, and I feel it right in the, uh, the sacral, when you are connected, so connected to your soul and spirit down into that sacral, that sacred center, that you call the, the sacral chakra, you'll know what it means to be loved. You'll know, you'll understand how beautiful you truly are. And then it's in this inner state of knowing your beauty and why you were created that you will begin to manifest, co-create and manifest a new earth. There are no mistakes. You did not make any mistakes. There were only lessons. You did the best you could. She's speaking to the parents, it sounds like. You did the best you could with what you knew at the time. And so it's important to forgive yourself because you came in for this time and you brought your child in for this time. And we stand ready with you. We are changing to, wow. Well, they got me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. I felt my myself start to tear up there. That was really yeah, powerful. I was. felt that was to me too. I felt she was speaking to me too. You know, about all the yeah. times we pick ourselves for what we could have done or should have done better for our children and the mistakes that we made and we, we put ourselves down and Thank you, Sammy, for reminding us that we are human too and we're doing the best that we can. And, and they feel that and they sense that we try our best and that's all that we can do. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it talking to you and I love watching your other videos um, and watching watching them and it's, uh, it gives me hope. Um, you know, you're bringing together a lot of different people and their experiences and uh, it's giving me a sense of, uh, even where we are on the planet, um, as people are waking up and things. So it's really fantastic what you're doing. So much honor to you. 
thank you so much. Thank you to you and to Sammy and and perhaps we'll do a part three at some point in the future where we can you can show us more artwork that comes through and more messages. Oh, I love it. It's collective. Yeah. 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 And she's embodying. So, you know, I can kind of talk about uh, someday, um, you know, a little bit more, more about her embodiment and what um, that has looked like. It's been quite a beautiful and bumpy and, and really do some beautiful, beautiful awarenesses that have come from that as well. So, yeah, keep in touch. Absolutely. We will definitely keep in touch. Well, thank you for every to everybody for watching this evening or whatever time zone you're in. Uh, we appreciate your presence and I hope this message finds you all well. Until next time. Bye, everybody.